SGD. This is uh, Google Earth image of the Giza Plateau, the Great Pyramid up here, the Sphinx, the Sphinx Temple and the Valley Temple. Now let's get an aerial photo of that. What this video is about is the, uh, the con, the long con of ancient lost high technology, the tour industry that goes along with that. So again, Great Pyramid, Khafre Pyramid, Menkare Pyramid, and the Sphinx, Sphinx Temple, and the Valley Temple here. Now, uh, arrow is actually pointing to the stone, and this is the stone in question here. This is one of the you know, smoking gun, irrefutable pieces of evidence that the academics and everyone's you know, not talking about because it's precision advanced machining evidence. There's another view of it, just so you can see the Khafre Temple, uh, Khafre Pyramid in the background. So there's those Google Earth images, but here we have two higher resolution images so we can see it from the side and uh, a bit from the front angle. And so um, Uncharted X, you know, Brian Foster, Christopher Dunn, this whole crowd are still selling this, and this is the the thumbnail this is, this is oh my god look at this all right i'll try to remember to put these links in this description but then we see a photo here and so again we see well it's not the red one that we're really interested in it's the blue circled here that's that same stone so that angle so again you can see the chipped corner um again just so that there's no confusion oh you're getting the wrong stone or you're taking them out of context or whatever all right let's go so this is it and where does this come from? Well, the fountains, like the the, the source of a river of all, you know, not the original source, but in the last couple of decades, Christopher Dunn is the go-to guy. He's always referenced, always sourced, uh, interviewed, and this book might might be getting on two decades old, but all the information, not all the disinformation in there is still being repeated. I've covered this earlier. The Serapium, vases. Uh, symmetrical statues it is all literally bogus and um, but they sell well Christopher Dunn's an aerospace engineer manufacturing expert um, and they sell it on this well okay so these are from his book it's available free on archive.org but still overpriced and page 156 uh, through to 161 so I go back to 156 so that's that stone Okay, we see the marks again. That is the stone. We get another view from the side. Again, just use those markers just to be sure where we are. Um, now here we begin. What is remarkable and important about the Valley Temple contoured block is that it allows, that it shows the ancient Egyptians crafted not only flat surfaces, but also contoured surfaces with uncommon precision. This is a uncommon precision, unambiguous, machine-like precision. Is, I keep saying this thing, so... Uh, what is remarkable actually is that the the entire lost ancient high tech they still like they get the vapors when they flat surface. I'll put the link in the description. I posted uh, this video just the day before. Our stone masonry apprentices and masters with hand tools. What happens is that free people apply for an apprenticeship position, totally new to stone masonry. The very first task was to create a flat surf flat surface, and their instructor, as he says. If you can't make a flat surface, you'll never be a stonemason. Well, the fact is that if you can't make a flat surface, you'll never be a craftsman in any medium, whether it's wood, stone, or anything else. But uh, they're sold this flat and precision. Uh, I'll put the playlist in the description. Making flat, actual precision, not the fake precision that they report, but actual industrial-level precision is easy to do. Um, well, anyway, let's keep going. So this is the first the first lesson that the mason learns is boning in, how to create a flat surface. Even that expression, boning in, probably comes from here, making a flat, the, the first lesson. The ancient Egyptians, this is a tool and it's been used since ancient times until very recently, probably still because it works so well, boning rods. Two equal length sticks with a string across the middle and then you run a third length string string along the middle when it touches you know you've got a high spot and you can create incredibly flat surfaces egyptians were depicted using these 
Temple of Rekmire, Tomb of Rekmire. Uh, so this guy, again, he's selling himself, engineer, craftsman, and, and no one's addressing these problems and, and all of this. Uh, well, okay. Um, string. Stretch a string to uncommon precision to make a simple straight edge, and then you can calibrate a wooden straight edge. Now, with a very simple rubbing and polishing method, uh, if you rub something, and not just little e -e -e, but like in, a, in larger circles, over a larger area, you will create a flat point because the high points will, will take out the low points. And that's, that's the essence of flatness, but you can make one with a string. Just so happens that the Egyptians showed themselves using a taut string to create a flat surface over a body of stone. Master craftsmen? expert engineers and so we also have Yusuf Iwan the master stonemason and a few other the, the amount of comments that I've had and I've seen in other I'm a master stonemason generations and you can't do this I don't know what's happened to the the, the trade and it's not even it's not even a stonemason thing it's just a uh, any craft any tradie who's ever in a pinch is I will just grab a piece of string. This is stuff that you're not even, you should be able to, you work this stuff out as children. This was high school shop level type of stuff, all right? Um, is Christopher Dunn unaware of string lines or are these people denying the existence of ancient string? So first lesson, boning in. He also talks about the mason's eye or the ability for a skilled craftsperson to see flatness without using a straight edge. Then you bring the straight in, edge in to be really accurate. But uh, again, any master craftsman who would just develop these skills, you don't even, yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Uh, let's go further. So there's an even greater mystery that is forgotten piece of Egyptian architecture. If we discount the smaller piece nearby has originally part of the piece we are studying, there is only one piece that survives. Well. Um, is this the smaller piece that he's talking about? Because two pieces survived. Uh, and also just around the... So they're on the southern side of the... Now on the eastern side of the Sphinx Temple. So Valley Temple, Sphinx Temple. Uh, we also have uh, these pieces here. So again, decades old, lost ancient high technologists. Book sales, tours, documentaries... They have, they are the establishment. They have the money. They have the views. They have the media, uh, drooling over them and getting them, giving them all attention. Graham Hancock now is a, a Netflix documentary coming out. So this thing that we're oppressed, no, no, they are the establishment. Okay, um, so in all these, they've never taken a straight edge to the Serapeum and they go, oh, you get busted, but they pay, they bribe the people to go into inside the Serapeum when you're not really allowed. So this thing is, oh, but, you know, we're going to, you know, you're not allowed to, uh, that's, abs that's a bogus, that's a lie. They've had you know, the opportunity, they could get one of their people to go in there. They, they sent people down the Sphinx's asshole to go have a look. So this thing of, oh, but, you know, the, the academics are blocking us. These really basic test tests are what, they could have done and what they should have done and what they won't do because the tests have actually have been done and then they still deny it. Lost ancient high technology is a scam. Uh, but that uh, piece, which is now upside down, so it would be a, was a cornice, they're calling it here, a top piece, uh, even says, well, why would they go to such efforts to put this, you know, because the casual walker by would barely be able to see it. Okay, this is, okay, let's just keep going. Uh, sliding the 12 inch straight edge along the crown of a convex radius there, I could not detect any variation which would be revealed by light showing through the straight edge interface with the stone at several locations around the arc or repeated inspection with gauge coaxial with the center line of a radius and found remarkable consistency. Uh, he uses this a lot and okay, it sort of is appropriate, but it, it's um, especially to the layman audience that he's selling this book to, it's sciencey. He's like grading it up into something that it's not. Right? In, in other words, he took a straight edge and ran it along the straight parts and found them to be straight. That's what this is. Meaningless, all right. Uh, but back to that doc, uh, that bit that I cut together from a couple of documentaries about stonemasons. Uh, the second task, so they made a straight edge, a uh, flat surface, their second task. So they're not even, a, they're applying to a, a be apprentices. Their second task was to create this. Their third task 
was to create this. If I, well, when the master, the high stonemason come to check out their work, uh, and it was pretty nice, but even he's like, uh, he said to him, you couldn't even repair this to, now this is not the actual piece, watch the, the uh, doco to have a look at it, but he said like you couldn't even repair it. Um, but like running a straight edge along here and then you run, run along a, there and then you run a straight edge along there. Like what is the issue now? That's a small corbel, but there are bigger pieces. You can see big Roman architraves. You can see all sorts of um, you know, pre-machine advanced technology. They focus on Egypt and they conveniently ignore, well, the Romans must have had advanced super friggin' lasers you know, from their shark's head to do this type of stuff. But that's very conveniently ignored because it, it ruins this narrative at their form. Because the written records in Egypt aren't as good as the Greco-Roman ones, then they can operate in this void. You know, you can throw anything down a dark alleyway and say, you know, that's a, hundred, that's a gold coin when you're just uh, throwing dog turds down the lane. And that's how they work. Uh, they never will shine the light on it because they're not the least bit interested in truth. What kind, and now the question is, what kind of mediocre craftsman couldn't maintain a straight line? Uh, this kind, because he's not a master craftsman. At best, he's a... Uh, well, any, nah, I won't go into that. Um, I, I've got a lot of respect for machinists and tool makers, and he comes from that tradition, and so he should know better. Either he is incompetent, incredibly incompetent, and absolutely useless with hand tools, or he's a scammer. I don't know which one it is. I've, he must know better, though. He, he has to know better. All right, next part. Now I'm going to cut this and put it onto the next page so it flows because it's you know one page on paragraph starts and then carries on the next page. From a photograph taken on the end of a cornice, we discovered ancient Egyptian applied geometry of tangent circles in building the three-dimensional form. And then I tried to detect the variation in the smoothness of the transition between a large concave radius and a small convex radius, but I could detect nothing but perfection of form. There are no ripples on the surface. There are no ridges or bumps or depressions. So in other words, they polished it smooth. Yeah. Now, how many pla like ancient pre-industrial stonework or even ain't, how many have like bumps and ridges and ripples running on it? It's standard freaking craftsmanship stonework. Now, okay, I could say exactly the same for this Porphyry statue or uh, this um, wooden corbel with a you know compound curve, whether it's mood, whether it's wood or stone or glass or any material, any, you're not a craftsman if you can't do this. For an aerospace engineer to state this and, and part of a greater package, so it's not just highlighting this, but the whole book in this particular chapter is, it's embarrassing. It's unbelievable that he like that him and this larger industry uh, look at this. So it's um, this is exactly the kind of work you would give an apprentice who is just starting out to do. And as we saw with those applicants for apprenticeship stonemasons. So from the photograph taken, we discovered the ancient Egyptians applied geometry of tangent circles in building the three-dimensional form. The precision and geometry of the piece cause it to stand apart from many other artefacts lying around it. It surpasses the columns and wall blocks that make up the construction of a temple. And I can't, cannot help wonder what important purpose it served. Uh, well, okay. But then we'll go to the next part. So because the block was broken off at the end on an angle, the large circle, which is this large circle, does not fit close to the end. It should also be noted that the large circle is approximate, given the unevenness of the end. The radius at the far end, however, presents with more reasonable accuracy. We'll get to that in a moment, all right. So we zoom in on that, we have, so tangent. So we have a smaller circle, and he's suggesting that this is you know, precision machined to meet that geometry. Uh, well, okay. It's an approximate, so it is an approximate, yeah. All right, so we look at that. So that piece, 
is broken off at the end and there is an angle. So when you are looking at it here in the black and white image down there, well, because the top is a little bit further away than the front, that is going to skew it slightly. And so he's, that large circle is you know, intended to be along this line here. Because of that angle, which is it is broken, it will distort the way you perceive it. So if you look at it here, it looks much steeper than, than what it is. However, uh, um, okay, so the radius at the far end, however, represents with reasonable accuracy the concave arc that begins at the bottom and end, ends tangent to the top convex radius. So this little circle, the big one is closer, the little one is farther away. Okay. So where is the little circle? Well, it's here, down here. He's got it right there on the end. And it's, well, where is it? It's where the broken part is. Yellow circle, yellow line. However, so tangent should be a 10. All right, um, better zoom in on it. What, what, what's, what's going on there? What's going on there? Okay, let's zoom in on that a little bit more so here it is tangent and well over here this is a magical circle method of christopher dunn uh, links in the description to his symmetry of the statues and how he either can't uh, apparently computer guy using you know engineering standard uh, programming can't line up circles in straight lines so I'll just change the contrast a little bit. Uh, that should match, but it doesn't. Right? Because if you take a low-res photo, draw these circles using the method he does, well, to be fair, it would be a good indicator for further investigation. But it doesn't prove anything. And in this case, it actually goes against what he's saying. So with this information, we can reasonably, reasonably certain, we can be reasonably certain, reasonably certain, no, you, you cannot be reasonably certain, not at all, especially following what we have learned of the design protocol of statues and crowns, that the piece was crafted to conform to exactness using true arcs as the design elements. Links to this video in the description. Um, we look at his circle technique to, to uh, you know, the symmetry precision of the statues and you find out that they're not symmetrical not precise and not only that they're obviously not obviously not like I, I, he must be trolling or or impaired to even suggest that and all those who promote him take it on faith but again they've never um, and even when they're shown this no I still keep selling it uh, is this inept or a deliberate pattern, same with the vases, same with the serapium, the statues, and now this piece here. Again, you say, well, it's an old book, he's corrected it, but still selling it. Lectures, podcasts, uh, and then those, and then it's, it's cloned, and you just see it over and over and over. It's so unoriginal, this stuff. It's just copy, paste, and uh, at least if I added a little bit in there, it would be something, but it's just... Uh, broken record stuff okay next section of pages but so uh, in the but the question still remains why go to such trouble for an architectural detail that goes into a building uh, you could knock me over with a feather <laughs> to, to say this um, apply this to anything to any ancient temple or even pre you know pre-machining stone masonry why would they go I mean these things are 90 feet, you know, 30 metres up in the... Like, why would they go to the effort? This question must be asked. These must be machined to a higher purpose. There must be a, a higher purpose and must be machined because look at the precision. Look at the... Pre, look at that precision. I mean, it, it screams precision. Look at it. It's pre, everything's precise. From... But, OK, that's... 18th century, well, again, look at, you know, a thousand years ago, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. Um, now, from a distant epoch in time, it would not be surprising to find a cornice that had been bush-hammered 
and then given a polish without regard to a high level of precision. Uh, where is this high level of precision? Oh, okay. But discover not only strict, strict constraints in a design, but also the adherence to machine-like precision on a granite block that is destined merely to look elegant and attractive provides more evidence in the emerging picture of lost technology. So machine-like, like where, where is this? They just say it. It is a lie. It doesn't exist. Um, but then to say that destined merely to look elegant and attractive provides more evidence for emerging. So if I, uh, I mean, merely to, to look elegant and attractive, this must, <laughs> it's, look, if you apply this logic to anywhere else, it, it is parody. If you, if you just change imagery in the background and chuck in a meme, you, their scripts are actually parody. Uh, just beyond now, for LH, Lost Ancient High Technology, precision has the accuracy of saying about three feet as an exact measure. It is meaningless. It's a buzzword they use to sell books or tickets for their tours. If it's not a deliberate scam, it's an unintentional scam. Given that they sense of the very data that they ask for, I think the intention of this is quite obvious. Uh, especially they're just, just, just asking questions, just looking for truth. And when it's provided for them, which is the work that they should have done, they're profiting from it. Um, well, you know, they're, they're, they're the ones with, uh, in contact with the TV companies. They're the ones that get the dockers. They're the ones that get promoted by the algorithm. Look at the view count and the sheer number of these type of videos and where their presence is. Uh, I was in the street. Uh, like what really upset me a few years ago, I was in the street and I heard young, well, teenagers almost verbatim uh, quoting Bright Insight, Uncharted X, Brian Foster, and Christopher Dunn. These sham con artists are having real-world impacts. This is not just entertainment. Now, some people go, oh, it's just, okay, well, for you it's good, but for most people it's not entertainment. It's not presented as entertainment. It, there's no disclaimer that this is entertainment and all the other factors that go into it. This is given the political climate and all that, I try to avoid, but this is harmful disinformation, which has real world impacts. Do what you want as a grown, but they're dumbing down children and for that are a pox on your house. Okay, next one. A piece of granite has all the hallmarks of machining. Uh, okay, well, does this stonework have all this, look, compound curve, straight line. This has all the hallmarks of machining. St. Andrew's Cafe, oh, like, okay. But that's not granite, okay. Well, uh, Vigland Sculpture Park. This has all the hallmarks, straight edges, corners, compound curves. Uh, so why isn't this? Because, again, these got, they say things without any responsibility, without any care, without any uh, adultness. Now, Cut into the piece are characteristics that experienced machinists and designers use to allow a more rigid, stronger tool to be used to machine it. Um, but you may say, well, there are no machines in ancient Egypt. Why then would these features exist? We could say there have been no machines found in the archaeological record that we can argue were responsible for this kind of work. Well, because this kind of work does not require machines. Again, if you apply this to any other ancient temple or modern temple, such as the ones made by hand that you can like literally see the stonemasons friggin' doing, they do it without machines and they do it to high, high skill. They're artisans, they're craftsmen. So this presents a bit of a uh, conundrum for there are no tools whatsoever in the Egyptians ancient Egyptians toolbox that can be used to replicate what has been crafted in igneous rock which is imposes majesty on our consciousness. Uh, fun fact, people have been working igneous rock for tens of thousands of years. Like uh, The Stone Age was human history and in the last dot we've hit the Bronze Age and then come into the Iron Age. Uh, countless of like this precision like this, this is pre precision. So a Neolithic people 
must have had advanced machines and materials because there are no tools to in the record to work igneous rocks at granite. This is a lie, for there are no tools whatsoever in the Egyptians' toolbox that could be used to replicate what has been crafted in igneous rock. Can what, if you can do it in wood by hand, wouldn't be questioned. Igneous rock, so whether it's, even if it's sedimentary rock, igneous rock is harder to work with, but it's this, can we shape these materials? Absolutely, we can. This is simply one of the biggest and most persistent lies that keeps being told by the lost ancient high technology community. Some of them you think, well, they're just parroting, you know, they've heard it and it's said with such conviction, um, and then you, you plight with them and you get shadow banned, blocked, or ignored when they say absolute falsehoods. Make no mistake about it, this is a cult. They're, not, they, they're baiting you with the stone, but then they want to sell you on the lost, spiritual, advanced, telekinetic, telekinesis, ayahuasca civilization of the past. They say you can't cut, you can't drill, you can't polish. Then you do it and they go, oh, but it takes too, uh, and takes too long. They go, and the scale, and the scale. Well, large scale, hundreds of workers, small scale, one worker. They cannot be so without logic and reason not to be able to figure it out, but they're always looking for any little loophole to get out with or some vague statement of, ah, oh, but, but. Um, precision is another one of the lies, no, pardon the typo, almost without exception, Christopher Dunney cited as the source. All right, now, look at All right, now, now he's talking about this couch block. Um, you just look at Scott, like I'm not even going to go into it. Sculptors do beautiful work, um, but what he did was you know, uh, transitional and true 11.112 millimeter tangent blend. Comparative measure was made by forming wax that was then pressed into the radius and then checked in several places along the arm. Like, yeah, that's it. It's, it's like his latex mold. Uh, so let's use the Christopher Dunn method, all right? Talking about that corners piece. Now, because of a contrast, it's uh, the angle that he's taken this photo at would greatly affect the circle, number one. Um, so again, this is, but take 10 photos at a slightly different angle, you'll be able to, to, to put the circle um, in there. Because notice like you can only see a little bit here at the top, but well, hard to tell, but follow the, the cursor. Well, that's the bottom part of the stone. So this photo and circle is absolutely useless. doesn't convey really any information, and it can be manipulated very, very easily to get whatever you want. And then, of course, he's used that circle at the back, which is where the broken piece is, and then again, it's still even then it doesn't fit. This is absolutely meaningless. It doesn't... You cannot be reasonably certain of anything from this. Uh, but back to that stonemasons, apprentices, masters with hand tool. The final task of their six-week course, not at the end, by the end of the six weeks, not at the end of the six weeks and then, uh, they, they were asked to design and make a sundial. The winner, oh, I forget the lady's name, um, this was her sundial. And one of the reasons she won was because, well, she put some forward into design. The other ones were like just basically the two other guys were just trying to show off and they just did these big, ugly things that just doesn't sit well in, in the garden and it's not, uh, anyway, um, that's a design thing. But okay, now I'm going to use the Christopher Dunn method. I did the same in the statues. All right, so I'm going to take that curve and I'm going to put a circle onto it. Now, if you draw a circle large enough or small enough, you can get it to blend into any curve. Now, because they're a, a ser it's a compound curve, so I'm going to take that top part of the curve and the green circle. The green circle, the center point, is right on the blue line. Right? Now, do one from the other side. Now, from that curve here, I'm going to get where the, you know, the circle sits on it. And now it's tangent to 
the blue line and to the green line. And if I put a red one to fit that other part of the curve, uh, it's tangent with a yellow line. This method which Christopher Dunn uses, and again, the last ancient high technology guys have done nothing. They've been the Serapine, they've done all of these other things. They demand other people do... Um, Scientists Against Smith on their Russian language channel, which it's in Cyrillic, so I don't have a name, they went and they measured the thickness of vases as well. I'm, I'm guessing that's going to come out soon. I want to see what mental gymnastics that they do to, to get around this as well. Um, but you can use this method to get anything. So ma ma machine-like precision geometry with a mysterious purpose, but it's made of stone which contains quartz. Ah, power plant theory comes in, a sundial. Obviously, advanced solar power resonance was involved. He also authored the Giza power plant. So... Um, well, sundial, Ra was the sun god. Uh, in Latin, Deo, god. Ra, Deo, uh, Artun was also an Egyptian god. R Re, Deo, Artun. Oh my god, I've just, it's a nuclear power plant. And all these, you know, if you just draw enough circles and, and delude yourself and be incompetent in really like high school shop class levels of work, uh, you, you can get anything that you want. Radio Atun. God, God, oh, Fryscrape was a real entity confirmed, all right. Lost ancient high technology precision has been proven, ain't it? Uh, it is, it's, wor it's worthy of um, Philomena Kunk to, <laughs> to do a doco, it is parody. All right, now, uh, in that uh, piece that I showed with the, the pre-apprentice masons, how did they do that corbel? They used a template. A template, so master craftsmen and these you know, master stone masons never heard of a template. This is must be for post-masters craftsmen. <laughs> PhD templates, all right. Um, in the, I'll try to remember, but the impossible polygonal megaliths of Japan, but actually stonemasons restoring a wall of traditional techniques. Uh, the walls are curved, very much like this, but they're giant. And it's important for that, but uh, what they did was, well, they created a jig. Now, for a big wall, they created a big jig, but to keep that curve, well, they just measured the wood out, and they're going to build the wall to against that. Now, of course, when a stone goes in front of a wood, well, you can just slide it back and then you put it back in place. So this is a jig. Again, this is high school stuff. Uh, anyone who, do who doesn't go to a template or a jig to do their work is not a friggin' master craftsman and is a crappy engineer. Uh, so that's how they got the curves in their wall. Very simple, very ancient technique. Now some of the because they had to replace some of the stones, and how did they do that? Well, in ca this case they used plastic. You could use a piece of cloth uh, or a piece of papyrus, <clears throat> and they made a template of the shape of the stone, and then that's how and they transferred that template to the new piece, and they cut it to shape. Actual master craftsmen, this is how they do it. Primitive, ancient, simple technique: string lines. Plumb lines, rulers, templates, and jigs. So, this is giant. You make a little one, and then you can get that curve there. So a template, one from either side, begin with a flat surface. Then you template it from either side, and then, well, you just remove the waste material. It's in, you know, those pre-apprentice stonemasons were taught how to do it. And... Uh, then you have a jig like this and you just run it along to keep it straight. This is lit this is lost ancient high technology. This is, they look at simple craftsmen and, and oh my God, this can't be explained. Um, it's, he's, an, he's not a craftsman, not even a bad one. Uh, he's at best incompetent uh, but I, but I believe he knows what he's talking about. Given you know, uh, him and Arlen Andrews, they must know. But yet they're still selling this because it's as a Sigma forum, it's science fiction.
this is what it is. It's science fiction and and uh, and another point. Um, granite is so lava gets lava pours out of a volcano. It cools down and makes basalt. Lava that cools down inside the deep inside the Earth's crust, or well, not even deep, but below the Earth's crust, and cools very slowly, forms granite. All granite is formed, if you see granite on the surface, it was because it was created underground and the earth has eroded to reveal it. There is no magical mica surface granite, uh, these Uncharted X. Uh, like again, either don't know what the hell they're talking about or they use these sciencey terms and our oh, feldspar mica, and, but Aswan is surface, and this is like not meeting, matching the surface granite at Aswan. It's all, it's bogus and it's all made up. Or, or, or they really are deluding themselves, but they're far too clever to be deluding themselves in that way. Like they run these very successful tours um, and you see it also like, you know, the, the once the History Channel is now devolved into this uh, rubbish as well. So this magical piece is nothing. It's irrelevant. Uh, it's a nice piece of stonework. But in terms of lost ancient high technology, it doesn't show or prove anything at all in the least. The only thing it does prove is the ineptitude slash the delusion of lost ancient high technologists and how desperate they are to find something. They're, they've got a conclusion and they're looking for data and this is the data they present. Uh, they've got zero interest in, in actual craftsmanship or looking at you know again we can the egyptians depicted themselves doing the things that they say that they could not do and it is it's all just a, a, a giant look lost ancient high technology is like meth uh best not even once but the sooner you can get yourself off this cult uh the, the better and it's and the best way to do that is to fact check and once you fact check these guys everything falls apart and in case of Christopher Dunn they're exposed again as utterly incompetent or deluding themselves and trying to drown other people as they get drowned down but again more likely oh, this is a giant con um, because yeah it seems only the people with integrity uh, who were in that camp are willing to leave it but um you get treated like an apostate because that's yeah. If you you know you're a cult because you, you, once you you know you become a suppressive person um, once you leave it, and so that's it. That this is a this is a joke. This is so far from reality that it is. Um, it's it's cringe, and you could say, well, this is one bad. But again, other video the the serapine the vases, uh, the the schist disc. All these things that they say is impossible, advanced machining, part of a machine tool, is just b bullshit. With that, SJD, have a good one.